this one. We created this one. Reference capacity, yes, she. We created this one. So I'm assigning this one. The moment I assign this, the timings will get changed over here. Will get changed. Okay, capacity category is double zero one. The moment I assign, whatever the timings we made it, that will get assigned over here. See, it has become nine o'clock, nine to seventeen hours. Okay, now I'm saving this. Okay, so I uh, I will go to scheduling tab and costing tab later. Okay, first we'll understand the uh, importance of reference capacity. So I created one. The the one I created is Kumar underscore ninety nine. Kumar underscore 99 and what is the start time here? What is the start time? Morning 9 o'clock to evening 17 hours. Okay. Now I'll create one more. I'll create one more work center. Kumar 88 and creating. Okay. Now I'll copy from the existing one. Kumar 99. I'm copying from the existing one. I'm creating a new one. Enter. I'm selecting the views. Basic data, default values, capacity, scheduling, costing. Continue. Done. Now next one I will be I will be creating the machine is uh, filling machine, bottle filling machine. Okay. I'm creating this. Enter. Okay. Go to capacities tab. Here go to capacities category. Here also your reference capacity is already assigned. If you go here. See, reference capacity is assigned to this work center. Okay, now go back. Okay, I'll go to, we'll discuss scheduling in a minute. Scheduling tab and uh, costing tab. Okay. As of now, I maintain, save this. Okay, so I, I created next one. Kumar underscore 88. Now this also is having this time 9 to 17 hours. Now let's create one more work center. I'll create Kumar's underscore 77. Again I will copy from the existing one. Click on copy. Okay. Now we'll create packing machine. Bottle packing machine. Okay. I'm creating this one. Enter. Okay. Just one minute. Okay. Now again, if you go to capacities, if you go to the capacity category machine, again your timings are 9 to 17 hours because it is also assigned with reference capacity. Okay. So now all are having same time. Correct. All are having same time. Seventy-seven. Okay. So now all your machines, all your work center is having the same time. Start time is 9 o'clock. End time is evening 5 o'clock. Now I am saving this, scheduling, costing, we will come to this costing and scheduling views in a minute, now I am saving this, okay, done. Now let's say after some time your organization decides that I want to operate my machines now from morning 8 o'clock, after some time they decided that. Normally what you will do, you go to each and every machine, you go to each and every work center and you will change that time manually, instead of that already we are using reference capacity so if you change in the reference capacity wherever this reference capacity is assigned to work center there it will get changed to automatically okay now i will i will change in the reference capacity so we will go to the reference capacity this is the one we created reference capacity we'll go to change mode go to change mode okay go to change mode enter now what is the current timing morning nine o'clock to 17 evening 5 o'clock that is what we maintained okay now here I will change here I will change the moment here I will change it will get automatically changed in all the work center where this work capacity got assigned reference capacity got assigned so I am changing here 8 to 17 hours now it has become 8 hours now I am saving the capacity the moment I change it it will get automatically changed in your all your work center where it is assigned now let's check whether it got changed or not. So let me go to work centers we created. Change mode I will go. First one is Kumar 99. Enter. Go to capacities. Go to capacity category header. See what is the time now? 8 to 17 hours. Previously it was 
9 to 17 hours now it got changed to 8 to 17 hours because we have changed in the reference capacity way which is got assigned to this work center okay so this is called reference capacity hope this is clear it's like a template common capacity which you can use in work centers instead of going to each and every work center maintaining that you maintain a common okay yeshi is it clear yeshi yes, yeah well, this is how you use the reference capacity okay so now let's move on now let's uh, see the other other uh, tabs okay so this is the capacities and formulas i will explain you in a minute how the formulas are used in the scheduling tab now let's go to the scheduling tab so in the scheduling tab you maintain your capacity category based on which you want to do scheduling why we maintain this capacity category here means in this capacity category we maintain the timings morning 8 o'clock to evening 17 hours that the timings i want to use during my scheduling function that is why you maintain that now you maintain here formulas now you maintain here formulas what is this formulas okay i'll tell you what is this formulas if you click on the button i let's say mission time there is you, you may they have maintained a formula how they maintain this formula what is the logic behind it let's say uh, i am uh, let's say to pro I, am pro I am producing a product let's say to produce thousand hundred pieces it takes one hour it takes one hour okay now to produce thousand pieces how many hours it will take how many hours it will take uh, Sumit to produce thousand pieces how many hours it will take 10 hours 10 hours how you will calculate that how you will calculate that you calculate like this correct you calculate like this thousand multiplied by one divided by hundred correct uh, you will calculate this one so you will get 10 hours so this formula this formula is maintained over here okay this is the machine time this is the machine time machine time okay and this is the this is the operation quantity this is the operation quantity thousand pieces this is the operation quantity and this is the there is a base quantity this is the base quantity 100 pieces is the base quantity Okay. So to produce 100 pieces, it takes one hour. Okay. Now to produce 1000 pieces, you use this formula. This formula is nothing but this. 1000 means operation quantity multiplied by machine time divided by base quantity. That is what they maintain here. Okay. So based on this formula only, your operation duration will get calculated in the production order. When we go to the production order, I will show you. Even if you want to test this formula, you can test it on the down if you scroll down on the down there is a button called test formula test formula are you able to see if you click on that you are getting this pop-up box here you maintain let's say my operation quantity is thousand thousand hours okay and my base quantity is like hundred hundred okay and uh, my machine time is one hour now if i test the formula your work time should come as 10 hours correct i am i am testing this formula my operation quantity is 1000 pieces okay sorry not this hr sorry this is pieces sorry okay base quantity is 100 okay my machine time is 1 hour for this base quantity now when i test the formula when i calculate the formula your work time should come as 10 hours now you see when i, make, I click on the button calculate what happened total duration it has come as 10 hours okay so you can test the formula also whatever the formula you enter here whether it is working properly or not you can test by clicking on this button okay now if you see the formula of setup time what is maintained only setup there is no formula kind of stuff setup time is always constant why because whether you are producing 100 pieces 10 pieces, 1000 pieces, your machine time normally same, right? Initially you make some settings, you you check all the machine parts are okay or not, you take some trial run, all those things. That is independent of your operation quantity. 
that is why it is only set up time okay so this is how the formulas are different then of course these formulas will be defined in the configuration when we go to the configuration that time i will show you how to define these formulas okay so you understood how the formulas are how the formulas work uh, sumit Yes. 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 Right. Ah. So this is the uh, scheduling. Now after that, the next tab will be costing. Okay. So here in the costing tab, you maintain the cost center. Okay. This cost center will be provided by your FICO consultant. They will create this. They will give it to you. You have to maintain here cost center. Okay. Now in this cost center, they will maintain the activity type for each parameter. Our standard value, which we maintain in the standard value key. setup machine and labor for each standard value you will be assigning a activity type so in this activity type they maintain a rate okay i'll tell you how to how the rates are calculated let's say i want to calculate my production cost okay my production cost i want to calculate so they will maintain a rate per hour how much cost they will maintain here so based on that it will get calculated so this is all. so what happens is you have the cost center in the cost center they will maintain activity type okay in this activity type they maintain the rate per hour how much now in your work center you maintain the standard value key and formulas okay and this you will assign to routing in the operation based on the formulas your duration will get calculated that duration multiplied by rate your production cost will come. okay so this is how work center is integrated with costing Okay, I'll show you this in Excel file how it is gets calculated. Suppose let's say this is a one. You are running a machine on a product for a product A. You are producing one kg. to produce 1 kg your machine setup time is 1 hour okay your machine time is 2 hours your labor time is 4 hours two two labor are working two labor are working on this machine so 2 hours means 4 hours so this is for 1 kg these values are for 1 kg okay now finance people what they do is in their transaction called kp26 they maintain this rate 10 hour 10 rupees per hour for machine 10 rupees per hour 100 rupees per hour and for labor we will be paying 1000 rupees per hour so this rate they will maintain in their transaction in the activity time activity time now when you create a production order for 100 kg 100 kg what will be your hours this is for 1 kg right 1 kg 1 hour setup time remains the same now machine time for 1 hour it is 2 hours for 100 kg how much it will become 200 hours 200 hours 2 multiplied by 100 divided by 1 so it become 200 hours that is a formula now labor we are paying uh, labor for 1 kg it is 4 hours now for 100 kg it is 4 hours so this is your operation duration okay now this duration gets multiplied by this rate 10 rupees per hour to your production cost will come these are called activity cost activity cost Okay, this is your. So now all these activity costs will get clubbed, and you, this is your total production cost. This is how your production cost will get calculated. Okay, so this is how your production cost will get. These three will get summed up. You will get the production cost. Okay, so to do calculation for each activity type, they maintain rate in their. transactions kp26 so for each activity type they maintain rate and this activity type you will club to our, you will assign to our parameter and this is the formula again for doing this calculation okay so this is the integration between uh, costing and production costing and production so this is the one we discussed this is the one we discussed okay so you have a cost center you have a cost center in this cost center they define the activity types for each activity type they define a rate this is the rate dollars per hour here it is maintained as dollars per hour okay now in our work center we have our 
standard values set up machine labor and now when you uh, assign this operation in the routing okay your uh, durations will get calculated and these durations multiplied by this rate your internal cost will come, production activity cost will come okay so this is how the costing is defined okay when we go to production costing product costing topic that time i will we will be discussing in detail in depth we'll be discussing in depth okay as of now just try to understand the concept this is how it is defined okay so now the next one will be default work center what is this default work center we'll discuss okay so let's uh, i'll save this work center i'll save this work center Oh, got disconnected. Huh? Let me log in again. So this is a scheduling tab we discussed. Just one minute, I have not saved this. This interoperation times and all we'll discuss when we go to the scheduling function. Okay. Now costing, we have the activity unit we are I main I am maintaining. Okay. Now all data maintained. Okay. Now I'm saving the work center. So this is how you create the work center. Okay. So that's all about your work center. Now what is this default work center? Default work center means when I'm creating the work center. Suppose if I go here, I'll create a one more work set. Kumar underscore eleven. When I'm creating this, the moment I enter, already exist. Okay, Kumar fifty. When I'm creating this, if you observe, all by default all the values are coming right. All the default values are coming right. So these are coming from a default work set. It is called as a dummy work set. Okay, the default work center makes work center maintenance easier and can be defined per plant and work center category. In the configuration, you will define this default work center. Okay, it will save your time basically. It makes your maintenance task easier. Okay, so I'll show you that in the configuration. If I go to the configuration, SPR. Scroll down, go to production, okay. go to basic data, work center, general data, okay. here you are able to see define default work center. If you go here, so for the plant and work center category, what work center category we are using while well, creating triple zero. So for this combination, See, they maintain a dummy work center. Default work center is nothing like a dummy work center. Basic data. If you go here, see what is maintained. Responsible person, triple zero. That is why it is coming by default here, triple zero. What location they maintain? One, production area. It is coming as one. Okay. All task list type, they maintain triple zero. So, as this is maintained, there it is coming by default. Okay. Suppose now I will change this. Person responsible, I will change it to triple zero two. And location, as I will change it to... Let's I'll change it to storage area three. Okay. Now I changed this in the configuration for the default work center. Now I'm saving this. Okay. Now you see what will happen. Now if I go to basic data, so this is the one, right? Now when I'm creating a new work center, this will come by default. So let's let's go and create a new work center. I'm coming out of this. Now I'll create Kumar underscore eighty eight. I'm creating this. Now you see what will happen already exist what happened what is a responsible person now coming double zero two and location storage area it is coming why because they are made in the default work center okay so basically this default work center will make your life easy okay and all screens are blank if no default work center has been created for the work center category plant. if you don't create this dummy work center created then you your screens will be blank your all fields will be blank and you have to enter each and every field value you have to enter that is the default work set 
okay so now reporting purpose now reports so i want to see some of the reports in work center let's say and go to the reports and save that i'm not saving this work center so to see the reports in work center go to logistics production master data work center reporting cr05 work center list let's say i want to see all work centers in my plant okay enter your plant and execute it will give you the list of all the work centers in this plant okay see all the work centers in this plant see the one which we created kumar now it is showing see the one which we created kumar 77 kumar 88 kumar 99 now those are showing over here from here you can go to that particular work center put the cursor on the work center just click on this button choose it will take you to that work center okay so this is how the work center list you can execute now let's say i want to see only work centers with a particular category with machine category okay so i'll i'll, I'll choose category 0001 now execute when i execute it will show only the work centers with that category see now all are with work center category 0001 Okay, like this you can see. Okay, here also, like yesterday's one we discussed, you can create a variant. Okay, you can create a variant. So let's say I want to see only the work centers with triple zero one and a triple zero two. I want to see only these work centers all the time. Okay, so now enter the work center category. Now click on save. Okay, I'll create a variant. I'll create a this variant. Okay, now I'm saving this. Okay, now next time when you go, I log off once. I log off once and log in again. Okay, now when I go to CR zero five. Okay, if I select the variant. Get variant. Only one variant we have. Yes, she knew. The moment I double click on it, see, plant is coming, and then work center category is coming. So you can create a variant by using this. You can execute the report. Okay. So this is the work center. Coming to the configuration part of work center, we'll discuss in the end. When we go to the configuration, that time we'll discuss all the import configuration. Okay. So this is all about your. Uh, Uh, work center.